All right. Miss Fuzzy Mittens. Miss Fuzzy Mittens. Miss Fuzzy Mittens. Again. Didn't show up. Oh, oh well. I gotta go take a shit. Ah. Are you done yet? Uh, yeah, you pretty much literally scared the crap out of me. No, it is time to reveal my number one pick. Drum roll, please. My number one superhero movie of all time is... The motherfucking Toxic Avenger, bitches. Oh, hell yeah. I put this film at number one because it really shows how a superhero movie should be made. It's really an all-out underdog story that involves a 98-pound weakling named Melvin Ferd, who just seems to never get a break. He gets pushed around this health club he works at by some bullies who just outright use him as a self-esteem booster. Would you take a look at that fucking guy? The mop boy. One day, the bullies decide to play a prank on Melvin. But it kind of goes way too far. At least the truckload of uncovered toxic waste was there to break his fall. But all and behold, that toxic waste transforms Melvin's whole entire being into a fugly looking monster with superhuman size and strength. And this is the origin story to New Jersey's first superhero, the Toxic Avenger. Even though they didn't call him that in the film, he just went by the monster hero. And wow, to be honest, Tromoville, New Jersey really needed a savior. Ugh. Apparently, Tromoville was way more corrupt than Gotham City. Like, come on, they had these guys joyriding and running over children for fuck's sakes. you think the mayor of Tromoville would do something about it. But nope, because Tromoville is run by a graft mayor named Bell Goody, who preaches good quality for his town, but behind the curtain, he is just a dirty crook distributing illegal drugs and turning Tromoville into a giant landfill. Hmm... Actually, Mayor Bell Goody kind of reminds me of Rob Ford. <laughs> anyway, you think Toxie, the ugliest thing on planet Earth, would be a huge problem for Tromoville. But no, it's quite the opposite. He goes delivering mob justice, or should I say, mop justice, to all the criminals around his town. He just wants to stop all the corruption that's been plaguing Tromoville. Not just willingly either, he has these things called traumatons, which is an unbalanced chemical in his body that acts up whenever there is evil around. But these traumatons are also a curse for Toxie as well. He can't stand the fact he has this bipolar problem that makes him vigorously smash people from day to day. What have I done? Oh, it's not what you've done. It's what I've done. I, I think I'm out of control. You see, you're blind, Sarah. You don't know who I am. Really, the monster hero you've heard about. And every day I go out and I mash people. I tear them apart and I can't stop. You better move back to your apartment. I don't think it's safe for you to be around me. Oh, Melvin, I couldn't leave you now. I love you, Melvin. See, they also made him somewhat human in a zany sort of way. But the traumatons is what makes the toxic Avenger. They also have a little revenge plot where Toxie goes after the bastards who bullied him when he was Melvin at the health club. And thank God, these bad guys are way more toxic than the Toxic Avenger could ever be. Come on, they go out joyriding and running over people and beating up old ladies. Don't tell me they didn't deserve what was coming to them. <coughs> yes, this movie has some very creepy undertones and not to mention it's gory and violent as all hell. And this film is meant to be a glorified PSA about humans decaying planet Earth with garbage and pollution. But I don't care for its political message. I just like how it's a well-constructed superhero movie. Like it has all the elements like for a superhero movie. Ordinary guy turns superhuman. Until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Saves his town from bad guys. Becomes an iconic hero and loved by everyone in his town. Like really loved. The pink elephant too. I'm telling you, these guys were gonna kill us. It saved our lives. 
It was a hero! A hero! <laughs> Main villain wants to stop him by any means. ...to handle the situation. That's why I need your help. The National Guard? I was hoping that you would say that so we could kill it. Main villain gets pwned at the end. <laughs> and for it being a B-movie from the 80s, there isn't really a whole lot of plot holes to pick out from the film. It's just straightforward, and it's just such a damn hilarious movie, too. And not to mention, as ugly as Toxie is, he still managed to get a girlfriend. A blind girlfriend, yes. But that's still better than what any of you comic book nerds can get. Oh, bazinga! <laughs> so to sum it all up, for a campy superhero spoof, the Toxic Avenger did pretty well. This film was like watching a comic book come to life. And it generated three sequels. Part 2 had some funny moments. Part 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie, was just horrid and boring. Apparently Lloyd Kaufman had to film these two back to back. Citizen Toxie, The Toxic Avenger 4, well... I'll just say this. It's not a movie you should play for your kindergarten class. And I heard a sequel and a remake are in the works. Holy traumatons, Batman! The uh, only thing that worries me is the remake is going to be made by Steve Pink, the guy who directed Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't really like that movie too much. But I'm not going to dismiss Steve Pink or hate the guy for it. Apparently he's a big trauma fan. Nice. I think him and I would get along if we ever met. And those are my five most cherished superhero movies. Seriously, to me, they just aren't big summer blockbuster hits that you forget about a month later after seeing them. But there are plenty of more superhero movies I enjoy. So that concludes this video. I'm the Senator. I hope you enjoyed this top five list. I'll see you all again next time.